welcome to another week of worship from St Rollock's Church of Scotland in Sight Hill in Glasgow. And you are most welcome wherever you are tuning in from, uh, whether you're a member of the congregation, whether you're a friend of St Rollock's or someone who's just stumbled over our broadcast on the internet. We're delighted that you're joining us in this time of worship today. And we look to God to fulfill his promise to us that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of us. And the amazing thing is that he can do that even though we are not physically next to one another. His spirit still is able to unite us and give us that sense of fellowship. So may you really know that today as you worship with us. Our first song this morning is one of the Psalms, and before we sing the musical version, we're going to hear just a few words from Psalm 23. It's perhaps one of the most well-known Psalms in the whole of the Bible, and it portrays God as a shepherd who looks after us as though we were sheep being looked after by the shepherd. And for me in particular, I love this psalm because it speaks of God's understanding of the different needs that we have, from the times we need to be laid down in the quiet pastures to the times when we find ourselves going through difficulties and the valley of the shadow of death. But in all those circumstances of life, he's there with us. So let's hear some of the words from Psalm 23 before we go on to sing it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. With these beautiful words, let's worship God together today. And if you'd like to sing, the words will appear on your screen. The Lord's my shepherd.
So let's pray together this morning. Lord God, we thank you that you are the God who watches over us as a shepherd watches over his sheep. You notice when one of us goes astray and you take the time to bring us back to yourself. You know when we are exhausted and need to lie down in green pastures. You know when our souls are weary and need to be restored. And we thank you that you do all of that for us. Lord, this psalm reminds us of the way in which you are constantly present with us. That even though there are difficult things that we may experience in our lives, we do not need to be afraid of them because you are with us and you bring us comfort. We thank you, Father, for the beauty of your promise to us that goodness and love will follow us all the days of our lives. And when we forget that, when we think that the world is against us, would you in your kindness remind us of that promise to us that your goodness, your love are still there. Father, we thank you that we can rely upon you to be a faithful God, one who is deserving of our trust no matter what we experience. Thank you that you do bring us through tough times. We thank you for your faithfulness to us over these last months of this year when things have been so difficult and strained. And yet each of us can look back and recognize your presence with us. How precious that is to us. Father, as we come to worship you today, there are many things that have happened in the last few days in our lives and all of that is known to you. There are things that we've said and done that we're not proud of, that we wish we hadn't said or done, and yet we did. So help us in this moment of quiet to come before you and to confess our sin to you, not in fear, but in humility and in the confidence that you, God, have promised to forgive our sin. We have the reminder of that in the person of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who laid down his life so that whoever believes and trusts in him wouldn't perish but have eternal life and come to dwell in your house forever. Help us to know the joy, the relief of sins forgiven. And lead us in this time of worship by your Holy Spirit. Open our ears to hear your word and open our hearts to receive that word and give us the wisdom of your spirit to know how we are to put that word into practice as you teach us today. Take from us anything that would distract and help us now to be focused upon you and to have that sense of you, our God, focusing on us. For we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue our series looking at the Lord's Prayer, today we come to the part of the prayer where we ask God or say to him, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we're going to read from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. We're reading in the very first chapter from verse 3 to 12, where Paul outlines something of what he understands to be the will of God. So if you've got your Bible, you might like to turn to Ephesians chapter 1 and read with me from verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him 
before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. Amen. And may God bless his word and open it to us as we consider it together just now. Prayer is a complex enterprise, yet at the same time it's so simple that the youngest of children can pray. It's something that we understand, and yet it's also a mystery. In prayer, we may ask many things from God, and yet, as this petition reminds us in the Lord's Prayer, we are asking fundamentally that God's will would be done. And that's a pretty big concept to get our heads around, especially when so much of our praying is about asking God to do things for us and for others. I'm sure you'll have had something of the same experience that I've often had of praying for someone or something, asking God for something very specific, a new job, a life partner, healing, restoration of a broken relationship, good exam results, whatever it might have been. And you've been pretty convinced that this is what is needed for that person or situation or indeed for yourself. But at the same time, you know that you are to pray for God's will to be done, not your own. So you tack on that very phrase to your prayer. Your will be done, Lord. Sometimes we even say, but your will be done, Lord. And we end up praying with something of a sense of resignation over God's will, somehow thinking that his will isn't nearly as good as how we think a situation should be resolved. And I know we don't necessarily say that out loud, but in our heart, isn't that something of what we occasionally think? We have a kind of fatalistic approach. If it's God's will, it'll happen anyway, despite what we pray for. And this can have the effect of putting us off prayer. It becomes an expression of resignation about the inevitable or the inescapable. But you know, the original version of the Lord's Prayer does not have this resigned tone about it, not at all. Rather, it points to something of the restlessness and the impatience of the disciple who sees how many sources of resistance to God's divine will for salvation are still present in the world and how much in this world actually pushes back against the kingdom of God. And so praying this phrase of the Lord's Prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, is not an expression of resignation when we understand it in this way, but exactly the opposite. It's an expression of hope. It's an expression of faith for this earth and this world because it reminds us that one day God's will is indeed going to be fulfilled and that nothing is going to stop that. What then is God's will, we might ask. 
And the passage that we read from Ephesians today explains something of the overarching will of God for the world. We read that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ, that he has chosen us before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. We're told that in love he predestined us to be adopted as his children, his sons through Jesus, and all that to the praise of his glorious grace, which he's freely given to us in his son. That's the will of God for us. His will is that we would experience all that it means to be his children. Redemption, forgiveness, and, as Paul goes on to say, that we would know his will, which is to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, who is Christ. This is the will of God. His will is that we're included in Christ because of our knowledge and acceptance of the gospel of salvation. And we might call this the sovereign will of God, the will that he as king exercises over all that he has made. Paul also explains it in this way when he writes to the church in Rome. He says that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. The days in which we live are dominated by individualism. And this begins to influence our praying and our prayer. Paul points us to the day when everything is brought together under Christ. The creation, the nations, the heavenly realms, the earthly realms, everything that exists. And this is something of what we pray. When we pray, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. It is big. You know, we're engaged in something that is far beyond me and my and mine, far beyond you and yours. We're praying for something that encompasses all and every, something that touches the world. And my, I totally need to grasp something of the enormity of this prayer to expand our vision of it and to see again the largesse of God whose purposes and will are for the world, not just for me and not just for those I know and love, but for the world. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven Knowing that helps me put perspective on my praying for others. Knowing these greater purposes of God helps me when I pray for a specific person or issue and don't seem to get the answer that I want. When a prayer for physical healing appears to go unanswered, I need to remember that I am asking from a place of limited understanding of the greater purposes of God and his will. When a prayer for the broken country of Syria goes on for years and years without any apparent answer, knowing that God's will is being worked out, even although I don't understand it or may not agree with what I see, doesn't mean that the love of God and the presence of God and the saving power and work of God is not taking place. It is surely taking place in that country and in the lives of individuals there because God's purpose is greater than that which I could ever understand. God sees, knows, understands his purpose for Syria. And of course, that's just one example taken from our broken world. But he knows his purpose for Syria in the context of the surrounding nations and all that's happening in that part of the world. He knows his purpose in the diaspora of Syrians now scattered and living all around the world, so many having come to faith in Jesus, just like a similar situation in Iran with those who've had to flee the persecution in that country. 
we only see such a small part of what God is up to. We only see the earth part of the request, and then only part of that, but we don't see the heaven part. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Of course, it doesn't change the darkness through which we and others pass. But as Christians, believing in the Lord who is behind the Lord's prayer, trusting in the God whose will we ask to be done, we know that above the darkness, heaven is open and it is coming closer to earth with every passing day. If we trust him, trust him to work out his will, then as men and women in Christ, we can hide ourselves in that will. And by so doing, we can discover peace. For where his will rules, everything comes out right in the end, whether on the scale of nations or in the individual life. Of course, when we utter this petition in the Lord's Prayer, we're also seeking the ability to carry out the will of God, because God in his grace wants his will to be realized through his children to a considerable extent. The initiative, to be sure, lies with him, but God wants to rely on us as the instruments through which his will is realized. So we're committing ourselves to be partners with God in bringing about his will in the world. We're to lead by example in our obedience to the Lord, in the internal work of sanctification and becoming like Jesus with which the Holy Spirit helps, and in our activity, acting according to the example of Jesus. And so it is in our praying that we often sense the nudge of the Holy Spirit moving us to action. We dare not pray if we're not willing to respond and do Years ago, I remember saying to a friend that I wasn't willing to pray about living and serving God in another country because I simply didn't want to leave Scotland and all that I enjoyed here. Well, what a daft thing to say. Honest, but daft. God made it clear in plenty of other ways that this was what he was asking me to do. And it led to me spending 10 years in the Baltic States. Prayer, it leads to adventure. It leads sometimes to suffering. Other times it leads to sorrow. And thankfully, sometimes and many times it leads to joy. But responding to what God asks of us in prayer always leads to the deepest of peace and the greatest sense of fulfillment ever. It gives us, if you like, a taste of heaven. For in this prayer, that's what we're asking. We're asking that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So as we close, let's ask the question, how is God's will done in heaven? And we're given clues to answer this question in the book of Revelation. We're told there that heaven is a place of utter perfection and glory. Listen to this. The nations will walk by its light. The kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Heaven, as the Lord Jesus revealed it to John in a vision. Ultimately, the Lord's prayer takes us to this day. It was Origen who said, when the will of God is done on earth, as already done in heaven, then the earth will no longer be earth we will all become heaven. Isn't it amazing to think that as you pray, words that you may have learned as wrote as a child and lived with all your life, that these words carry such hope 
bring such peace, that these words, your will be done, that they take you into the very heart of God for his world and involve you in all that he is doing to bring all things together under Christ. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now ask yourself, how that vision and understanding of these words will transform your praying day by day. refrain that Jonathan has just sung for us is one that we will take and use as we pray today. So when I say sing praises, we will do that and we'll join in that short refrain and the words of course will be on the screen for you. So let's sing it together and then we shall pray. Sing praises all you please. we thank you that as we look at this prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples, a prayer known to so many of us, we are discovering treasure within it that we hardly believed was there. We're also seeing the depth of the challenge that the words of this prayer bring into our own lives. And we ask that you would continue to teach us through it so that each time we say these words, we would pause and marvel at something of what is contained within them. So let us sing praises. Sing praises, all you people. Sing praises to the Lord. Sing today in our prayers we want to bring you our praise. We want to acknowledge what we've seen of your hand at work in our lives, the lives of those we love and have prayed for and across the nations of your world. We thank you that you are a faithful God, one who is building his church and is keeping that promise. Today, we thank you for all the places in your world where your church is growing. And we ask that in these places, you would raise up men and women taught by yourself and your spirit who have the depth of wisdom and maturity and are able in turn to teach others the knowledge of the Lord, to be able to pastor them, to care for them, and to be able to mobilize the church to live the life of Christ in their communities. For all of this, we sing praises. Sing praises, all you peoples. Sing praises to the Lord. Sing praises, all you peoples. Sing We know, Father, that these last few months have been very much a challenge for your church, particularly in our own nation, when we have not been allowed to meet together physically, and yet we have still had in our hearts that desire to fulfill the great commission of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have, by your Holy Spirit, 
inspired us to find new and creative ways of reaching out with the love of Jesus to those in our communities. We thank you that where we've been resistant to change, so many barriers to change have now been removed. And there is a real sense that you are leading your church forward. So as your church, we sing praises. Sing praises for you. today for those whose hearts are heavy, for those who find themselves in sorrowful situations, going through the valley of the shadow of death. We pray that even there they would find your company and your comfort and be able to be unafraid. Father, we think of those who are struggling to make ends meet in these days for whom there seems to be little hope of finding a new job or being able to support their family without aid from others. And we pray in your compassion that you would reach into such families and bring the light of your hope to them. Help us where we recognize others who are in need to be something of the light of Christ as we ourselves reach out to them, providing practical aid, a word of encouragement, practical advice, or even just a listening ear. Father, in all things, we thank you that we have the example of Jesus to follow and pray that you would enable us to be like him in the communities, neighborhoods, streets, villages, towns, where you have placed us. And as we ask this, we sing praise. Sing praises all you peoples, sing praises to the Lord, sing praises all you As we pray today, we pray in these wonderful words that the Lord Jesus Christ has left to us as we say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who've sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forevermore. Amen. So as we draw this time of worship to a close today, we sing a song that speaks of heaven and reminds us of the perfection of God's will being worked out already there and the promise of that day when heaven finds its way to earth and God's will is done here as it is in heaven. So let's join together and sing there's a higher throne than all this world has known. i 
So may that King, our God, go with you into this week. The God who reigns for evermore. The God who, if he is by your side, gives you confidence, trusting in him, not to fear, but to carry on and to be like the Lord Jesus wherever God takes you this week. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be yours this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.